The Tsar of Clinton County is superintendent of a school system that has been rated near the bottom of all the school systems in this country. His name is Robert Polston, and he and his administration have been under investigation by the Kentucky State Superintendent of Schools, the State Attorney General, the U.S. Department of Education, and the FBI on allegations ranging from misappropriation of funds and forgery of government documents to voter fraud and payroll padding. Robert Polston was not elected, he was appointed, and he has been running the Clinton County Schools for over 30 years. Everybody's afraid to speak up because the superintendent controls most of the town. I have a sister that's a school teacher over there. Uh, huh. And I definitely would not like to see her lose her job. And you think that if you spoke your mind, she might? I'm afraid of that. I'm talking about an organization. You do what we say, we pay you, we hire you. Uh, you do what we say, and you keep your mouth shut. That organization is in an isolated rural area in the foothills of the Appalachians. It is handsome territory. It is also poor, one of the poorest in the country. And it is Bible Belt dry. Those in search of demon rum have to go south 10 miles to Tennessee to get it. Many of the 9,300 people who live in the county eke out their living on the land, raising livestock, doing some tobacco farming. Clinton County also has some light industry. But the biggest employer by far is the school system, which gets 90% of its money or more from the federal government and the state government here in Kentucky. What that really means is that the biggest employer is Robert Polston. His nephew, Jimmy Polston Jr., is the principal of the elementary school, just one of more than 20 of Polston's relatives on the school system payroll. In the school cafeteria, we began to understand the allegation by the Louisville Courier Journal that he uses the school payroll to deliver political payoffs, jobs. 85 cooks and janitors, some of them part-time, for just four schools. That comes to one cook or janitor for every 20 students. School principal right. Jimmy Polston That's didn't why. want to talk about that. Why? Can't we just talk to you? I don't have anything to say. Born into poverty and living on a school superintendent's salary that today has finally reached $44,000 annually, Polston has managed to amass a personal fortune involving real estate, including this fine home and other acreage, the area's only car dealership, some oil interests, and until he recently sold it, an interest in this nursing home. Indeed, many, many locals told us he's a millionaire. I suppose they figure that a, that a school superintendent whose salary now is $44,000 a year should not be a millionaire. Yeah, well, I'm not a millionaire. <laughs> oh, come on. No, not uh, What's this house worth, Might be, Matt, if I have to pay all my debts, might be two, 200 or maybe out of less. You sold the nursing home for 2.6 million. And so if you owned one-fifth of it, you took half a million six hundred thousand dollars out of it, which is our understanding. No, no, it wouldn't be that much. They would have been only, and then, uh, that would have been, um, uh, four or five hundred thousand, I guess. Whatever he's got or hasn't got, the perception in Clinton County is that Polston is very well-to-do. Wealthy man? Oh, yeah. He tells very, very much so, I'd say. He tells me that he's worth maybe, maybe net worth a couple of hundred thousand dollars. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Everybody, <laughs> people over there are laughing, too. He's got more antiques in his house than that. What are you talking about? Do you know Mr. Polston? I've known him all my life. Have you? Yes. He was a very poor boy. Well, I don't know about that. We all started out poor. I was one of the poorest people in Clinton County when I was a kid growing up. And so was he. Right. But I, I didn't turn out to be rich. My family's still poor. He tells me that his net worth is maybe, maybe a couple of hundred thousand dollars. But you didn't really believe that, did you, Mike? But not everyone is critical. Well, I just like him. He's a good man. He come up from being barefooted. I remember when he was going barefooted. He didn't have shoes on his feet. He's a good man. He made something everybody was jealous of him. When he took over superintendent, four school buses, we got 50 or 60 now or something in this neighborhood. Sid Scott is the mayor of Albany, Kentucky. We have had a lot of one-room schools. Those are all gone. We've got a comprehensive high school out here that, you know, didn't cost the local taxpayers anything. Kentucky is ranked last nationally in educational achievement. It has the largest percentage of adults over 25 who do not have a high school diploma. In 1983, the state decided to grade all its school districts by testing students. And Robert Polston schools came in dead last in this last place state. 
And that concerns Dr. Gary Ledford, a local dentist. I see patients in my office don't have the education they deserve, you know, uh, filling out health questionnaires and stuff. I've got people, patients that can't read and can't sign their name. But the quality of education wasn't the only problem. Post and schools have a federally funded program for the handicapped. Zora Butler's granddaughter, Diane, was eligible for that program, but for two years she did not attend, despite the fact that these documents, with Mrs. Butler's signature, say that Diane was in school. Mrs. Butler says that her signature was forged. Would they get money for her? Well, evidently. In other words, they were forging your signature, is what you're saying. Somebody did. Five papers. I don't know who that somebody was. And those papers said effectively what? These papers? Well, it's because it's, uh, the papers affects Diane's already in school. That she's not her, going to school every day. And she wasn't. And she wasn't. In 1983 came the first public challenge to the Polson regime. The Reverend Ernest Harris formed a group called Citizens for Better Education and began to speak out. On a per capita basis, where does Clinton County rate in the amount of money spent for each child's education? Uh, according to uh, what we've discovered, uh, it is in the top third of the state of Kentucky. Out of 180 some systems, two thirds of them have less dollars per student than we have. And that was alarming to me because I'd been being told for six years when I would ask about education in this county as a pastor, we're poor people, we can't do any better because we don't have any money. When the article revealed that we have more money than two-thirds of the other system, I had to start saying, that's not the real problem. The problem is mismanagement of the money. Why don't we have an art teacher at the grade school, a music teacher, as the other schools have? Why don't we have playground equipment out there? Why don't we have some of those kinds of things? Why don't and you? I don't know. I, we have not got any answers on that yet. Well, who do you ask? I asked Mr. Paulson. Morning. We went to the monthly school board meeting to try to get some answers. Okay, I'll read the minutes of the last meeting. The Clinton County Board of Education met at, met at the superintendent's office at 9 o'clock. Uh, Burksville Supply Corporation uh, nipple for a boiler was $40.82. All right, you need to get then, Mr. Chairman, a motion there to approve your subsequent uh, disbursements made in accordance with the school board policy between board meetings. Who wants to make a motion? I will. I'll make a motion. Okay, we on the 18th, early on the 2nd. Did all in favor? All in favor. The man sitting in front of Robert Poston Next is time. Odell Gross, the chairman of the school board. Over on the other side are the four additional school board members. It's their job ostensibly to oversee the superintendent. Indeed, they can hire or fire him. After the regular business of the school board meeting was finished, we had some questions. I've just sat through a, uh, a meeting of the school board. There was not one question asked from any of the school board members. They simply sat here and voted yay to everything that was put in front of them by Superintendent Polston and by the school board chairman, Mr. Gross. Over the years, have you or the other school board members looked at the files, looked at the financial books? No, sir. Why not? It's just something that's never been done since I've been on the board 32 years. How powerful are you here in Clinton County, Mr. Poston? I don't know uh, uh, about my power. I don't, wasn't aware that I was powerful. Well, then why are people afraid of you? I, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I didn't know anybody was afraid of me. You're the only person I ever heard even make that statement. Mr. Wallace, I have a perfect example. My sister worked with me last year. Yes. The teacher's age. Yes, ma'am. She wasn't rehired this year because of my affiliation with Citizens for Better Education in Clinton County. What is your name? <laughs> Martha Markham. And she was told by James Earl Carver, instructional supervisor, that she was caught in the middle. And she received a letter at the end of school last year that she had reasonable assurance of employment. She is fully capable, yet she has not been rehired she's yet. She's not come in. Oh, yes, she's talked to James Earl several but times. She never had to come in to see me. Why wasn't she rehired at the last meeting, sir? Well, when the other teachers' aides were she hired, come in and, and the two and, uh, new teachers' aides were hired. That she even wanted to work, uh, go back. How many relatives of yours, Mr. Poston, are on the school system payroll? Well, I don't know, Mr. Wallace. Uh, uh, I 
I've got some relatives that's been working here that had their masters and rank one here for 20, 25 years, mm -hmm. when a lot of the people didn't even have a degree, and we had to have emergency teachers. So... Earl Polston is what relationship to you? Uh, he is my nephew. And what is his job? He takes care of the general uh, operation of buildings and grounds and uh, all, and uh, see that all of that is taken care of. His title is assistant superintendent? Yes, sir. What are his qualifications? He is a rank one. He has seven years of college. Your nephew, Jimmy Polston, is principal of Clinton County Elementary School, correct? Yes, sir. What's his qualification to be a principal of the school? He's rank one. And that means? He's, he's got uh, seven year college. Seven years of college. That's right. Where? He got his at uh, Eastern and uh, and Western. The mayor's daughter works in the school system. Who? The mayor's daughter. The mayor has a daughter that's a special education teacher. So she works in the school system. And the judge executive's wife works for the school system? She's a librarian. Polston insists that his relatives and those of other politicians who work in the school system are qualified. And he insists that the last place finish in 1983 by his school district was not because of unqualified teachers, but instead because of a mistake in state testing procedures. He points out that in 1984, his district moved up to 127th out of 183 districts. However, the circumstances of that marked improvement are currently under investigation by the state superintendent of education. In any case, the quality of the schools in Clinton County moved a concerned parent, Janice Warhurst, to speak up at the school board meeting. Mrs. Warhurst feels that the dismal performance of the schools is a reflection of the superintendent's leadership and his grammar. Uh, the grammatical errors made by Mr. Polson, who says he has nine years of college, and I have written some down. I don't have none out there. Hasn't been nobody I ever doubted nothing. Oh, hasn't been nobody is one. I never doubted nothing is another. Well, what are you saying, ma'am? I'm saying that if the, if the top doesn't require better than mediocre, doesn't require us to be better. Where are we going? What's happening to our children? Mr. Paulston, how do you answer that? I have the college and the training. I have English majors, so I know if I make a mistake. And I'll, I'll agree with you that the times that I might make an error. But while there are currently at least three state and or federal investigations of Robert Polston and his school system, it is rare to find anyone in Clinton County challenging him in public. Well, is this just politics that we're talking here? That's all. That's absolutely all. No, sir, it is not. I hate no. politics, but I realize good people have got to get involved in politics because evil flourishes when good people sit and do nothing. At the end of the school board meeting, Polston agreed to sit down with us the next day and go over all the allegations about his school's performance and his personal fortune. Can I ask you to sit down with me in your own home and talk a little bit more? Just a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you and me? I would uh, possibly be willing to do that, Mac, uh, with you, yes. I would be very grateful. But the next day, the superintendent was nowhere to be found. Despite the growing opposition to the Polston machine in Clinton County, his candidates held on to control of the school board in the November election. Despite the opposition to the Polston machine in Clinton County, his candidates held on to control of the school board in last November's election. But shortly after our broadcast, under pressure from state authorities, Superintendent Robert Polston announced his plan to retire. And he did retire last month. His replacement, his nephew. 